Hello and welcome to the Rust Talk News. I'm Luke Owen and this is Wrestling News. I, apologies, I'm actually just catching up on other real world news. Like I, I know it's not as important as the wrestling news, but it is good to stay abreast of other things that are happening on this strange little planet of ours. So, um, I mean, let, what's, what's the independent have to say? Donald Trump to CM Punk is 2023, the year toxic men finally get their comeuppance. Well, don't know about you, but I didn't have Punk being in the same headline as Donald Trump on my 2023 bingo card. CM Punk to WWE Hall of Fame confirmed. Speaking of Punk, and there's still some fallout to come from his firing from All Elite Wrestling over the weekend. When we did our breaking news video and our live podcast about this story on Saturday, we asked fans to be cool with each other in the comments. Tribalism is a big thing in wrestling for whatever reason, and there's even subsections of tribalism within those tribes. For example, there are literally AEW fans arguing with other AEW fans about which show is better between Dynamite and Collision, and a lot of that is fueled by the pro-punk crew and the anti-punk lot. And to your enormous credit, you were cool. Because you are cool, look at you. You're watching a near 40 year old man wearing a suit jacket and a Spider-Man bow tie talk about wrestling while you're sat on a toilet avoiding doing your job. But there have been a lot of arguments on permanent hellscape that is Twitter, and it's led to an AEW star stepping in. During the pre-show for All Out, Hangman Page took part in the over the budget battle royal, which he ended up winning. And while his generous donation of Tony Khan's money to the public school system was lovely, it's not not what Twitter was talking about. It was instead this woman giving Paige the middle fingers. Look, we've all been to wrestling shows. We often throw middle fingers to wrestlers we either don't like or to the heels that we're not supposed to like. But for whatever reason, perhaps because it came so close after Punk's firing, this lady became the target of an online abuse campaign, which included her being sent death threats. Now that I'm saying it out loud and you're hearing those words being said out loud, it sounds preposterous, doesn't it? This wrestling fan is being sent death threats for doing something all wrestling fans do at every wrestling show since time in memoriam. The fan in question has been accused of being a CM Punk mark, and she has tweeted that she has decided for her own safety that she's no longer going to attend wrestling shows. F***ing ridiculous. And so ridiculous is it that Hangman Page himself took to Instagram to tell fans, please do not harass other wrestling fans on the internet. I would be very disappointed in you and you should say sorry. Hangman Page once again being the only adult in the room. So yeah, don't be a dick, people. Just let wrestling fans enjoy wrestling shows. But if you thought the CM Punk news was done and dusted for today, ho ho, you've got another thing coming. Following Punk's firing over the weekend, all of fan speculation began on where Mr. Phil could end up. He has stated in the past that he wants to do the G1 or perhaps he'll just never wrestle again. But there is always a chance that he'll end up back in WWE with plenty of online discourse about this year's Survivor Series being booked for Chicago, the hometown of CM Punk. Dave Meltzer has said on Wrestling Observer Radio that there could be a chance WWE would take Punk back as it would be a huge signing for them. And Mike Johnson of PW Insider has said that there has been some discussion about rehiring Punk by top brass in the company, although they appear to be 50-50 on the idea as Johnson writes some are willing to roll the dice as there's a chance to make big money, while others are adamantly against the idea. Fightful Slate also reported that pitches were made for Punk to return to WWE last year, which would have included being a surprise Rumble entrant and going into a feud with Kevin Owens for WrestleMania. But there is a question in the air about how long Punk's non-compete clause is, which would prevent him from wrestling for another company until that expires. We've seen in the past with WWE firings that that's usually 90 days for main roster talents and 30 days for NXT contracts. Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics asked Tony Khan about this at the All Out press conference, which TK politely refused to get into. And Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select has also said that he's asked around and cannot find out an answer either. Now, the difference between WWE's usual non-compete timeframes, 90 and 30 days, is that those people were just released. CM Punk, as we know from the press release, was fired with cause. And while we can't take this as legal fact, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that, in WWE at least, if someone is fired or released with cause, their non-compete would be an entire year. If that is the case, it wouldn't be a Survivor Series return for Punk this year, not even a Rumble Mania or SummerSlam return, as he wouldn't be able to sign with WWE until next September. But do you know what? I think that is enough Punk for one day. 
because we've actually got some nice news for a change. Hooray! Zoe Stark has made quite a name for herself since being called up to the main roster during the 2023 draft, aligning herself with Trish Stratus and picking up a win over Becky Lynch. And has certainly been given more to work with than some of the other call-ups like Odyssey Jones, Apollo Crews, and Zion Quinn. Bet you didn't even remember they were called up, did you? And this has not gone unnoticed by WWE, according to Fightful Select, who report that Stark has been getting great reviews from talent she's worked with on the main roster, in addition to several backstage for how she's handled the call-up and the duties associated with it. SRS adds that WWE were impressed with how she came back from her knee injury and did not miss a beat in the ring, which led to her getting a shot in the Rumble and her good showing there put her on track to her main roster call-up. Now, isn't that so much nicer to have a nice bit of news for a change? I certainly enjoy the nice news. Now, what have we got next? Oh my God, what are they doing to Von Wagner on NXT? NXT has been getting a lot of praise as of late and quite rightly so. It's doing a lot better by its women's division than both Raw and SmackDown and it's making some big stars out of names like Carmelo Hayes, Bron Breaker and Tiffany Stratton, who by the way, is going to defend the NXT Women's Championship next week against Becky Lynch. WrestleTalk.com's Amanda Savage popped me on Twitter this morning when she compared NXT to a Muppet Baby version of the Attitude Era, and I'm not sure I've heard a more accurate description of it. And that's not a slam on NXT, by the way. It's actually, it's massive praise for the start of Muppet Baby's rules. And last night's episode showed why more and more people are finding themselves paying more and more attention to the developmental brand once again, as Bron Breaker did a huge injury angle with Von Wagner, who revealed on a recent episode of NXT that he needed major surgery on his forehead when he was just 15 months old. Breaker attacked Wagner and smashed his head with the steel steps, and the feed cut to black so viewers could only just hear the carnage and the commentary freaking out. It was an incredibly well done angle and in the building it was sold seriously with a big stretcher job and blood as seen here in photos shared by a fan in attendance, Debbie Deans 8. But that does mean it's now time for my NXT one minute one review. So one minute one review. I mean, I suppose it is one review. It's one minute one take. There you go. It actually shows how much of a one take it is. I got that wrong. Um, oh, I don't need to turn an airplane mode off. Hold on one second. All right, let me get my clock ready. Uh, timer. One minute on the clock. Right, okay, come on. British wrestling legend Kendo Nagasaki believes in you. So does a few other people, including Xavier Woods. Let's get this done. Three, two, one. Let's a go. Tiffany Stratton retained her title by beating Kiana James, and Becky Lynch challenged her to a match next week. Ilya Dragunov beat Oro Mensa in a very good match and got into an argument with Wesley about who gets the next title shot. Carmelo Hayes announced there'll be a number one contendership match next week. Nathan Frazier did an interview where he talked about glitching through the top rope last week, and Blair Davenport, Thea Hale, Gigi Dolan, J G Gigi Dolan, and JC Jane did some amateur dramatics backstage to set up a match for later on. Fraser then beat Duke Hudson in a Group A match for the Global Heritage Cup. That means that Fraser, Joe Coffee and Duke Hudson have two points each in Group B, while Akira Tozawa has zero. Uh, Tyler Bate beat David Yabadaba Kato, and then they, they did a brawl backstage between Roxanne Perez and Kiana James. Mr. Farrelly beat Dragon Lee with a fast count from special guest referee Don Mysterio. Butch and Axiom went to a time limit draw in Group A, which means the Butch now has three points. Axiom has one. Charlie Dempsey and Bate have zero. Come on, catch up a little bit. Uh, there were several skits throughout the night with the tag teams. Thea Hale beat Gigi Dolan with interference from Dana Blair Devonport. Dana Brooke was upset with Lyle Valkyrie, giving advice to the DMJ. Um, crikey. Tiffany Strand called Becky Lynch a bitch. And then we got the main event with Bron Breaker and Dolph Von. Ow, oh, Bron Breaker and Von Wagner. No, too, like, it, is a, it is a much better show than it, than it was, you know, a year ago. Too much happens on NXT. Anyway, go and watch uh, this Parts of Unknown video about the greatest IC champions, uh, which was done by Tempest. And it's a very good one. And there's also some, you know, some stuff in there about The Miz, which everyone seems to really love when we do. Uh, I'm actually going to take a, a, a selfie of myself on the set here. Um, which I'll then post to my Instagram later. So go to go follow me on Instagram and you can see uh, this selfie being there. Behind the scenes.